Once upon a time, a woman wanted a child so very much. She asked a witch to help her. The witch gave her a special seed to plant. And lo and behold, the seed grew into a single flower plant. The woman was so happy when the flower opened and a lovely little girl popped out. She was no bigger than the woman's thumb. I will call her Thumbelina and give her the best of everything, exclaimed the woman. One night, as Thumbelina slept in her walnut shell bed, a mother toad hopped in and snuck away with Thumbelina in her bed. The mother toad thought Thumbelina would make a lovely bry for her toad son. In the morning, Thumbelina was very upset to see she was stuck with the toads living on a lily pad in the water. She began to cry. A beetle flying overhead heard her cry and went to look at her. What a remarkable creature, thought the beetle. He picked her up and took her home to his beetle village. The other beetles did not think she was very remarkable, and they told her to go away. Poor Thumbelina left and began to wander alone in the forest as the cold winter wind began to blow. As she wandered, she stumbled upon a small hole. <laughs> A small field mouse found Thumbelina and offered her a home for the winter in exchange for helping around the house. The field mouse also mentioned her friend the wealthy mole who was looking for a wife. Just then the wealthy mole appeared to invite the field mouse to see how his tunnel was coming along. Thumbelina followed along and was surprised to see a frozen swallow sticking out of the tunnel. Oh, don't mind him, said the field mouse. Be glad you have arms instead of wings, said the field mouse. That night, Thumbelina went back to where the swallow was. She was surprised to hear a faint heartbeat while listening to his chest. <laughs> She put a grass blanket around him and hugged him close. Soon the sparrow was awake. Where am I? You have saved me. However, can I thank you, chirped the sparrow. Thumbelina promised to nurse him back to health until he was strong enough to fly away. Meanwhile, the field mouse and the mole were making wedding plans, which Thumbelina wanted no part of. The swallow got better and asked Thumbelina to fly away with him. But Thumbelina stayed. The mole arrived to marry Thumbelina, but she did not want to be his wife or the field mouse's maid. Oh, why did I not fly away with the sparrow when I had the chance, wondered Thumbelina. Just then the sparrow landed and said, better late than never, and scooped up Thumbelina and flew her to a magical land full of clear water, powdery beaches, and beautiful flowers. The swallow lowered her on a daisy and flew away. Thumbelina noticed a handsome young man perched on a nearby flower. He had transparent wings and a gold crown, <laughs> and he was just about the same size as Thumbelina. <laughs> Their eyes met and they fell in love instantly. I am the king of the daisies, said the young man, as he gestured towards the little winged lords and ladies who peeked from behind all the flower petals. Would you be my queen, asked the king as he kissed her hand. I would be honored to be your wife, said Thumbelina. She was presented with transparent wings just like the king's. All of the king's lords and ladies planned the most beautiful daisy-filled wedding. Thumbelina married the king 
in the most beautiful garden wedding the kingdom had ever seen. The king and Thumbelina flew into the cloudless blue sky and lived happily ever after in their beautiful flower castle. This is the story of Princess Elsa and Princess Anna. When they were little girls, they were best friends. Princess Anna was one of the only people in the world that knew Princess Elsa's secret. Elsa had the special power to make snow and ice. One night, Elsa used her secret power and filled the grand ballroom with snow so the sisters could play. As they were playing, Elsa lost control and she accidentally hit Anna with a blast of icy magic. Anna was badly hurt. Her parents went off to the ancient mountain troll to ask them for help. The wisest old troll told them that Anna could be saved and that she was lucky to have been hit in the head and not in her heart. As the years passed, Anna forgot about that night. To keep Elsa's special gift a secret from everyone else, their parents surrounded the castle with walls and never let anyone inside. It seemed whenever Elsa had strong feelings, her magic powers would spill out. Elsa never wanted to hurt her sister again, so she stopped playing with Anna. Anna became very lonely. Even after their parents were lost, the two sisters didn't spend any time playing together. Years later, it was time for Elsa to become queen. For just that one special day, the castle gates were opened. Hundreds of guests attended Elsa's coronation ceremony. Elsa worked very hard the whole day to hide her feelings and special powers. At the party, Anna danced with a handsome prince. He made her heart flutter. They fell in love and decided to marry. Elsa thought this engagement was a bad idea. Anna could not believe her sister, and they started arguing. As Elsa lost control and started to shout, her secret power was exposed. As ice shot from her hands, everyone stared in shock. Now they all knew her secret. Elsa ran out of the castle and fled to the mountains. It was summer, but Elsa's power had created a terrible winter storm. Anna felt terrible and ran off to find her sister, despite the bad winter storm. She met a magic snowman along the way named Olav. Olav knew where they would find Elsa and agreed to help. Olav led Anna to a beautiful ice palace that Elsa had created with her powers. Inside, Anna found Elsa and told her about the terrible storm. Anna told Elsa she must come back and help, but Elsa did not want to hurt anyone, and they started fighting about her return. As they fought, a wave of magic burst from Elsa and struck Anna in the heart. Elsa knew what she had to do. She had to find the trolls and ask how to reverse the magic which was now freezing her sister. Olaf agreed to help. Elsa and Olaf found the ancient mountain troll, and he said, Only an act of true love can thaw Anna's frozen heart. Elsa brought Anna back to their parents' castle to find the prince Anna was to marry, as he could save Anna with his true love. He laughed when he saw her and threw the sisters in the dungeon. I only pretended to love her to get the castle and kingdom, said the prince. Afraid and locked in the dungeon, Elsa looked at her frozen sister. 
All of a sudden, the prince came in with a sword. He swung it at Anna, and the sword shattered on her frozen body. Elsa grabbed her and held her frozen sister tight. And suddenly, Anna began to thaw. As Olaf watched them, he remembered the wise old troll and what he said. An act of true love will thaw her frozen heart. The two sisters' love had saved them and their kingdom. They were best friends again. Even in the summer, Elsa always made Olaf snow so he could never melt. And now the castle gates were wide open. The evil prince was long gone, and they all lived happily ever after. Simba the lion carried a heavy burden for such a young lion, as he thought he was responsible for the death of his father. His meerkat, warthog, and other animal friends wanted to help Simba laugh again. You must put the past behind you, they all told him. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata means no worries, they told Simba. Soon Simba felt much better as he joined his animal friends. swimming in the river and enjoying nice long days. As long as Simba did not think about his father's death and the painful memory of his uncle Scar, telling Simba that he was responsible for his father's death. Scar had told Simba to run away. Simba felt like he was always running away. One day, while playing, a beautiful lioness chased Simba's friend, the warthog. She wanted to eat him. The warthog was very scared. Simba saved his warthog friend and then realized the lioness was his old best friend from childhood, hey. Nala. Simba had run away from his pride land so long ago. Nala and all the lions and all the other animals missed him very much and she told them they needed Simba to save them from Scar and the hyenas. They were destroying the Pride Lands. Please come home, asked Nala. You are our only hope. Simba was not yet ready to return, and he sat and talked to Nala all night, and they kissed and had a private embrace. You can't change the past. It's all my fault, said Simba as he walked away from Nala. Close by, a wise baboon called out to Simba. You're Mufasa's son, he reminded Simba. He lives in you, said the old baboon, and he reminded Simba of that. The baboon led Simba to a pool of water and told him to stare hard at his reflection. Suddenly, the clouds parted and the water changed shape, and Simba saw his father, Mufasa, Remember who you are, Mufasa said from the stars. You are my son and the one true king. Simba was afraid of what he knew he must do. The baboon all of a sudden hit Simba with a stick. Why did you do that? It hurt, asked Simba. Doesn't matter, it's in the past, said the baboon as he tried to hit Simba again. Simba ducked, avoiding the hit. See, said the baboon, the past can hurt, but you can either learn from it or run away. Simba understood this lesson and decided to return to his father's land to save it from the hyenas and challenge his uncle Scar. I must fight for this or who will? We will, answered Nala, the warthog, baboon and meerkat. We are with you until the end. They followed Simba to the Pride Lands and fought a big battle with the hyenas. Simba fought his evil Uncle Scar. Scar admitted 
I killed your father, Mufasa. <laughs> when Simba heard this, a great anger surged through him. Anger for the death of his father. Anger for years of guilt. Anger for the destruction of his home, the Pride Lands. With a great roar, Simba flipped his uncle over the rock. Scar was defeated. Simba roared and finally claimed his rightful place as king. Nala was waiting for him and told all the animals that Simba was now king of the land. As news of Simba's return spread across the vast land, all of the animals once again roamed free. The land began to heal and Simba and Nala ruled as king and queen. Simba and Nala started their own family and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a man and his wife that had wanted a baby for so long, but had never had one. One day, the wife gave her husband the awesome news that they had waited so long for. They were going to have a baby. They lived in a house overlooking a big garden full of fresh vegetables and flowers. Sadly, the garden was protected by a high wall with barbed wire on the top. The mighty witch who lived there wanted no one in her garden. Everyone was very scared of the mighty witch. One day, the wife was so hungry for the fresh radishes. She saw them growing in the witch's garden, but she knew she could not have them. Although she really, really wanted them, she thought she might die if she did not have them. Her husband worried so much about her. She told him, I think I will die unless I can have some of those radishes that grow in the witch's garden. Her husband waited for nightfall so he could climb over the wall to get her some of the witch's radishes. He got her some and climbed back over. She made a big radish salad and it made her feel so much better. But she knew she wanted more radishes. So her husband snuck over the wall at night to pick more radishes. As he was climbing back over the wall, the witch was standing right <coughs> below him. How dare you steal my radishes, said the witch. My wife thought she would die if I did not get them for her. I am very sorry. If this is true, said the witch, you can have all the radishes you want on one condition. You must promise to give me your child to raise as my own. The man was so scared he agreed to whatever she said just to get away. When the beautiful child was born, the witch came and took her away, just as she had threatened. She named her Rapunzel, which means radish. Rapunzel grew more and more beautiful every day, and on her twelfth birthday, the witch locked her up in a high tower deep in the woods. The tower had no stairs, no door, only a small window. Rapunzel had beautiful long hair that had never been cut, and when the witch wanted to go up to see her, she would cry, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The witch would climb up her hair to see her. This went on for years. One day, a prince was riding by the tower and heard Rapunzel singing. He looked at the tower but had no idea how to get in. So he left. But he came by the next day and saw the witch crying. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And he saw the beautiful girl who sang, let down her hair for the witch to climb up to see her. The prince returned at dusk and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel could not believe it when the young prince appeared, and it was not the witch. 
they fell in love at first sight. They made a plan for Rapunzel to escape. The witch found this out and cut off Rapunzel's hair and hid her away far from the tower. That night, the witch waited for the prince. He cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The witch threw out Rapunzel's hair and he climbed up. To his surprise, it was the witch, not Rapunzel. The witch cursed him. You will never see again. And with that, he was blind. For some time, he wandered the forest, hoping to hear Rapunzel singing again. And then, one day, he heard her singing. He followed her voice and found her. They hugged and Rapunzel cried, so happy to see him again. One of her tears fell on his face, and a miracle happened. He could see again. Oh, I am so happy to see you again, said the prince. And then another miracle happened. Rapunzel's beautiful hair grew back, as long and shiny as it had been. The prince took Rapunzel to his kingdom far away from the witch, where they lived happily ever after. <laughs>